Derek Young and Matt Hall from inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Just four or five days until K-State kicks off the 2019 season against Nichols here Saturday night at 6 p.m. Derek, we had our first, you know, real press conference of the season. We've had a lot of media availability, but the first real Tuesday presser. Chris Kleiman and this team very excited, of course, uh, for Saturday night's opportunity against Nichols. Yeah, I, I mean, they were a little bit asked to, like, how important is it to win this right. game? And, and, of course, everyone wants to win, and that was the most common answer. But I think they're just excited to get, you know, a new season kicked off and play someone against – that's not themselves. Right. They, they can start hitting someone else different. It, you know, that's something that Coach Kleiman said. I think Coach Hazelton said it last week. I think they're itching to see an opponent that's not wearing purple. A lot of talk today about Nichols, about playing an FCS opponent. I thought Chris Kleiman had a really interesting answer where he more or less said, is that is that still a thing? Do people still talk about this? He thinks they don't. I think they do, but I get but I get his point. Uh, Derek, K-State almost lost a game in the stadium last year to an FCS team in South Dakota. They were down 12 with seven minutes left. That game was talked about today. The FCS was talked about today. What I'm trying to get to is there's no way, you know, with, an F, with a coach from the SCS level and what was talked about today, this team's not going to take Nichols light on Saturday, you wouldn't think, would they? No, they're not, and they're not going to. And I even had a couple players that said they probably took South Dakota a little yeah. lightly. So not only are they going to be taught by their head coach who came from that level not to overlook someone from that level, not only is there, you know, numerous examples of FCS programs, you know, nearly knocking off or actually knocking off Nichols BKU last year. Right. So they just did it a year ago. And Kansas State nearly lost to, lost to South Dakota. So they have a lot teaching them not to overlook Nichols this upcoming Saturday. So at this point, it's probably a disappointment if they did. No doubt. Let's look at both sides of the ball. The depth chart came out actually on Monday. Uh, we predicted it Monday morning. It came out Monday. Not much as far as surprises. In fact, none of them are really unique compared to what we projected. Um, maybe the biggest surprise, though, we did have, but was Evan Curl starting instead of Josh Rivas at guard. Uh, we've talked with him some today. Are you surprised by that? That K-State's going five senior starters on the offensive line, and it's Evan Curl instead of Josh Rivas? At the beginning of fall camp, if you would have told me this, I would have been surprised. Yeah. But because we kind of get tipped off by the actual possibility of this, you know, in the past two to three, maybe even four weeks, it's probably become less of a surprise because we got conditioned to thinking that it was certainly possible. But, I mean, nobody entered fall camp or entered the summer thinking, one, Josh Rivas wouldn't start, or two, Evan Curl would. Uh, and then, like you said, there is a little bit of surprise in going with five seniors when you certainly have Josh Rivas available and could do it to make you able to start someone that's not a senior because – uh, though I don't think all five of these seniors are going to start every all right. 12 games uh, for one reason or another. I don't think that's going to happen. But that really makes the learning curve the following season a little bit more drastic. Although, I keep saying although because there's just so many well, know, yeah. addendums to it. But I think, I think there's <laughs> – I always slip one big vocabulary right. word. behind the camera too. <laughs> but uh, I think they're going to play eight or nine guys, even this Saturday, and, and not necessarily because they think the game's out of reach. I just think that – I mean, at this point, are they going to play 65 players right. on Saturday? Are they going to play 70? It sure seems like they want to. And it's funny to me because on that topic, it's a game that may not have a ton of snaps. You know, K-State's not going to play incredibly fast. Nichols isn't thought to be a team that plays really fast either. So as you talk about depth and how many guys are going to play, it's not going to be a 100-snap offensive game. I want to ask you more about guys who are going to play on offense. I asked specifically how many freshmen, true freshmen, might play, and I was surprised at how specific Chris Kleiman was with his answer. He said about six, and he mentioned three on offense. Uh, Josh Youngblood, Joe Irvin, Jax Deneen. What about those three in particular? I don't think any of the three show up on the depth chart we saw, but it sounds like they expect to play them on Saturday. Is that surprising to you that they – I mean, not surprising because that's what they said they were going to do. They said they would get a list every week and go with it, but I guess they're practicing what they're preaching. Do those names surprise you at all, I guess? I don't think so. Maybe Jack's the name a little bit yeah. because of – uh, they're just, you know, him probably needing a little bit more time to ingratiate himself into the offense and being able to understand what he's asked to do and kind of being physically up to the challenge really as well. So uh, that's probably the only one. I've heard great things about Youngblood and Irvin. If you ask me, the two freshmen who I thought would play right away, like the two most obvious, those are probably right. the two answers. Deneen's probably 
uh, the surprise. And, and I hate to kind of classify it this way, but it's probably more out of necessity at this right. point. I think so. If we were going to speculate, and I'll speculate a little bit, you know, if there's six, Logan Wilson's a name we've heard multiple times, perhaps playing early. But you get behind, beyond him, and I start to wonder, are you looking at more of the freshman running backs? Are you looking at Cooper Beebe? But that's another topic. I want to switch to defense for a second. Uh, you've been talking about Wayne Jones being a starter at safety, Derek, I think since the spring. And I used to doubt it a little bit, thinking, man, is this redshirt freshman really going to be the other starting safety? He obviously is. Derek was right. And then Chris Kleiman says today that maybe nobody knows the system better than Wayne Jones, who's a redshirt freshman. So just about Wayne Jones, why did you like him so much in the first place? And then what do you expect to see from him Saturday night? Uh, he was someone that as soon as the staff took over, they kind of really flocked to and viewed as one of their best players. So whatever he did, he made an instant immediate impact that was really immeasurable, and it's only built from that point since. So in terms of Wayne Jones, it's really just how much they're, they've are they been able to rely on him. Um, and he was asked, Coach Kleiman that is, was asked in, in a way that's like, is Denzel Goolsby, how much is his experience helping Wayne Jones? And he almost brushed that off and right. was like, Wayne Jones doesn't need that. He, he, he came and he wasn't trying this, but he came off as like, Wayne Jones is one of our best defense players, if not our best defensive player. He doesn't need that help. That's the way I felt too. I mean, it was an interesting thing to hear the guy Coach Kleiman say, yeah, he's the smartest guy. So he's not going to be leaning on senior. The experience is great to talk about, but knowledge of the system, he's probably as far as anybody because that's what Coach told us today. I want to put you on the spot on this video. Is that okay? You don't know what I'm going to do here. But this is your official prediction, and whatever you say, like I'm going to hold you to this. When we debut something on Sunday, I'll probably make fun of you for it. Yep. Who is going to start at defensive end on Saturday opposite of Wyatt Hubert? Who will, be, who will play the first snap at D end on Saturday opposite of Wyatt Hubert? Who do you got? Yes, yeah, that's a good question. It's a great question. You're really trapping me because it's probably a 50-50. I know. Uh, that's why I put it out there for you. <laughs> a 50-50 proposition. I would lean towards Kyle Ball at this point. I would too. So if we're wrong, you can get both of us. We're going to wrap this up pretty soon. There's coaches walking out on the field. There's been players walking around. Eventually they're going to practice and yell at us and we'll have to leave. Derek, let's just, let's just do this on the video. I don't want you to give me a score because we're going to have a podcast on Friday. We played a preview of this. Do Powercat game day Saturday with Kurtz and Cole Manbeck. We'll have lots of opportunities. So not a score, but do you think K-State wins comfortably Saturday night or are we going to be nervous? Well, the fans sitting here in these seats, and if you sit, you know, in seat 27, 28, uh, row 38, I don't know what section we're in here, <laughs> uh, we stole your seat, and I apologize for that. But would they be nervous watching this game, D.Y., or will, by the time we get to the middle of the third quarter, you know K-State's fine? I think by that point it'll be fine. I really do. I think it's uh, it probably depends on the term comfortable. I mean, if, if you're expecting Kansas State to walk in Will the here, game be in doubt? Yeah, I don't think it will. But if you're thinking, hey, Kansas State's going to come in here and you hope that they win 49 to nothing, you're probably going to be disappointed. I think I've projected, I know you didn't ask for it, but something like 28 to 14 or 31 yeah. 14. I'll be in a similar range when we make our predictions. We'll write something on Friday for the site, make our predictions again. We'll be back. Friday with a podcast, Saturday Powercat Game Day, Sunday we'll have another show for you to watch. Lots of coverage of the game, of course. Would love you to subscribe to our website. We're still doing the 25% off plus a free $75 Adidas gift card or hit that red button on the bottom right corner of your screen. It'd be by Derek right now, I think by his knee, to subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate it. That's all we have to say from Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Thanks to Grant Flanders behind the camera. Myself for Derek Young. He's going to wrap it up by telling you to tell your friends.